know, if you want to be an actor, there are a lot of things that you have to decide for yourself. You know, because there are lots of different kinds of actors. So, it, uh, you have to ask yourself, well, what kind of actor do I want to be? Now, if you want to be a, do you want to be a uh, indicated actor? Do you want to be, do you really admire uh, British acting? Do you want to be able to do uh, classical work? Then that uh, that determines the kind of school that you're going to want to uh, seek uh, and and uh, find for yourself. If you want to be a, a realistic, truthful actor. Uh, then that's another. Then that's another thing altogether. Then you have to make a search there to try and find a school that's uh, going to take you towards your vision of what a good actor is. And as many schools as there are, there are as many points of view about that. Now, at William Esper Studio, uh, we have a uh, very particular point of view about acting about what makes a good actor, uh, what uh, constitutes really good acting. The work at the studio is primarily based on the uh, 17 years that I spent with Sanford Meisner. Sanford Meisner was one of the founding members of the group theater, which was a very, probably the most important theater that we've ever had in America, in this country. This was a group of, of uh, uh, very talented people who wanted to make a particularly ki particular kind of theater. It was uh, uh, socially driven, and they were con they were concerned with their reflecting uh, their times, their issues, their problems that they were going through as uh, citizens of uh, America at that time. They uh, were very influenced by Stanislavski. Many of them had uh, seen the Moscow Art Theater when it visited here in the early 1920s. And they were very deeply, deeply impressed. And so they founded this, uh, this theater. And uh, they were considered to be very eccentric, kind of a crazy group of people, because they used to go off every summer. They would go up and... Uh, uh, find a residency somewhere at some bungalow colony or, you know, some hotel where they would agree to en keep the guests entertained in return for their housing, their, their board, and uh, rehearsal space where they could work on themselves, exercise themselves, and uh, prepare one or two plays to bring back to New York in the, uh, in the, in the, in the fall. And in that, in that theater, Members of that theater, founding members, included Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler, Harold Klerman, Sanford Meisner, uh, Ilya Kazan, and a large number of very uh, talented uh, actors. Um, they never got uh, uh, really uh, financed. You know, at that time, it wasn't, it wasn't as easy as it is now to set up a non-profit kind of charitable organization uh, that would provide art for the for the community, especially not in the in the in the theater. And so they were financing all their plays just as if they were regular commercial productions that were coming in, meaning they had to raise money for each play that they that they that they did. And of course, in time, that got to be a very wearing and difficult uh, path to tread. And so the whole thing began as the, as the country moved out of the depression and more jobs and more better paying jobs became available in Los Angeles and Hollywood and in New York, uh, the company began to fragment and each of them began to go in their, uh, in their, in their perspective ways. But out of that, out of that theater came the great uh, uh, the triumvirate, if you will, of American master acting teachers and that was uh, Lee Strasberg, Sanford Meisner, and Stella Adler. And, you know, they're very, uh, they're very different, even though they, they, they all espoused and honored the work of uh, Stanislavski. It was not in terms of uh, being, doing what Stanislavski did 
in a literal way, but rather trying to emulate and uh, uh, find his uh, inspiration. You know, because Stanislavski was a great experimenter, you know, and he loved theater and he loved acting and he loved actors. And he looked around at a, at, the, at a lot of the actors of his period, you know, of the late 1800s and uh, early, early 1900s. And he saw that there were certain actors that he liked much better than other actors. People like uh, uh, the great uh, Italian uh, uh, tragedian, uh, Tommaso Salvini, who was supposedly the best, the greatest Othello of his uh, generation. And uh, he uh, uh, also, uh, Eleonore Duzet, the great Italian tragedian, who was kind of the person who uh, carried outside of Russia the uh, whole idea of being a truthful, authentic actor, who not only, not only created the outside manifestations and habits and mannerisms of a character, the way they look, the way they walk, all of those things, but also created within themselves the living experience of that character as the character moved through the, uh, the particular uh, work that they, were, that, they, that they were doing. So that, uh, that has been a uh, uh, very important thing about American acting. And those, those teachers who came out of the group theater dominated American acting training for 40, 50 years. And they're still uh, uh, a tremendous influence today.